This tutorial is for our two flatbed Epson scanners, which I've got labeled Thing 1 and Thing 2. First things first, make sure you've got the correct scanner plugged into your computer. Then make sure the scanner is powered on. When you open up the lid on our flatbed scanners, you may find that the glass is a bit dirty. This is going to lower the quality of your scan, so it's important to clean it up. It's important that you also only use the blowers and microfiber cloths that you find in the studios. This prevents the glass from being scratched. When scanning flat media, place the document face down on the glass and close the lid. For thicker documents, say for example like a sketchbook, place the document face down on the glass. As you're closing the lid, lift up on the hinge. This creates a small amount of space so that the lid can close cleanly over the top of your document. The rest of your work will be done using a piece of software called Epson Scan. If the software isn't already in your dock, go to Applications, scroll down to Epson Software, and double click Epson Scan. Oftentimes this software launches into a full auto mode. What we want is the professional mode. You can find this option in the upper right hand corner drop down menu. Most of the documents you'll be scanning on these flatbed scanners are what Epson calls reflective. The instructions for scanning film are in a separate tutorial. The source that we'll be scanning these from uh, will be the scanner glass, and the document type, for the most part, will call photograph. The document options recognize text. Maybe the most important decision you'll make in the scanning process is deciding which DPI to scan your document, that's dots per inch. A 300 DPI scan gives you a full resolution image in the original size of the document. If I go back into this menu and I select a 600 DPI scan, that gives me a full resolution scan twice the size of my document, allowing me to do some zooming. Doing a low res scan would actually simplify the document, making it a much smaller file to, say, include in an email or in an animation. I won't change anything in the document size because I'll do a custom crop here in a minute. At this point, when you click Preview, the scanner will run kind of an initial imaging of the document in a low resolution. Now I'll come into the Preview window and click and drag a custom size for my document. I'll often leave just a little bit of extra white space around the outside of my image so that I can do some custom cropping in Photoshop later. And now we're ready to click Scan. The window that pops up is going to ask you where you would like to save the file and what type of file you're going to save. It'll oftentimes default to save into the Pictures folder. I would suggest saving it to the desktop. So by selecting Other and Choose, it'll open up another dialog window which allows you to choose a specific location. Underneath Type, if you save a JPEG, that would be a fairly standard file type. A uh, TIFF option is a lossless file type. The amount of time it takes for the scanner to complete the scan will vary greatly depending on the DPI chosen and the size of the document. A 300 DPI scan will progress very quickly while a 4000 DPI scan may take 10 minutes. When your scan is complete, your file will be available on the desktop and you can continue scanning new documents.